Imagine spending billions on a bridge, a project that was supposed to stand strong for a hundred years, only to watch it reveal flaws before the paint even dried. These are not myths or conspiracy stories. These are real billion dollar spans that cracked, leaked, or faltered under pressure. Tonight, we dive into the world of modern mega bridges, where promises of safety and pride collided with cracks, lawsuits, and shaken trust. And by the end, you'll see how these failures tell us more about human decisions than about concrete and steel. San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge, USA. The story of California's Bay Bridge begins with tragedy. In 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake sent a section of the old bridge crashing down, killing commuters and reminding everyone in the Bay Area that seismic safety was not optional. The state promised a new eastern span, one that would be both beautiful and indestructible. Over a decade later, after redesigns and political battles, what emerged was a $6.5 billion self-anchored suspension span. It was marketed as an engineering marvel, the kind of bridge you could trust your life to when the next big quake hit. As reported by the Los Angeles Times, one motorist died when her car plunged into a collapsed section of the Bay Bridge during the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. But even before drivers had the chance to test it, the structure revealed a secret. In 2013, workers tightened a group of massive steel rods designed to clamp down a critical seismic component. Instead of holding firm, 32 of them fractured almost instantly. These weren't minor bolts. Each rod was the size of a man's arm, critical to holding down the system designed to keep the bridge steady in an earthquake. The cause was something called hydrogen embrittlement, a process where hard steel absorbs hydrogen in a damp environment until it suddenly breaks like glass. The headlines were brutal. A bridge that cost more than the annual budget of some countries was opening under a shadow of doubt. Engineers rushed into damage control mode. They installed an emergency retrofit known as a steel saddle, wrapping around the compromised zone to bypass the broken rods. That quick fix alone added around $25 million to the tab, but the cost was more than financial. Californians began asking, if the rod snapped before the ribbon cutting, what else might fail after the bridge opened? Investigations dug deeper. Other anchor rods showed signs of corrosion where water had slipped past protective sleeves. Micro cracks appeared under testing, raising questions about whether this bridge touted as earthquake proof was already showing vulnerabilities to rainwater and chemistry. Committees held hearings, agencies defended their work, and engineers tried to reassure the public that the bridge was safe. But the damage to trust was already done. For the people crossing daily, the issue wasn't whether the bridge would fall tomorrow. The issue was that the promise of perfection had been broken. When taxpayers invest billions, they expect reliability, not emergency retrofits and unanswered questions. The Bay Bridge still stands, still carries thousands of cars every day, and has faced quakes without disaster. But its legacy is scarred by those rods, a reminder that even the most expensive projects can stumble on details invisible to the naked eye. The lesson here is both technical and human. Ultra-hard steel may look strong on paper, but if it is placed in the wrong environment without airtight protection, its strength becomes its weakness. Hydrogen plus moisture plus tension equals failure and missing just one of those checks can derail a billion-dollar dream. The Bay Bridge reminds us that megaprojects collapse not in one spectacular moment, but in small, overlooked details that grow until they burst into headlines. SR520 Floating Bridge, Seattle, USA On the other side of the country, Seattle faced a different challenge. Its floating bridge across Lake Washington, built in the 1960s, had outlived its intended lifespan. Cracks, leaks, and constant traffic pushed Washington State to build a replacement. The new SR520 floating bridge was designed as the world's longest, stretching 7,700 feet, supported by gigantic concrete pontoons meant to act like unsinkable ships. The budget ballooned into the mid $4 billion range, but the public was told it was worth it. This bridge would be bigger, stronger, and ready for the next half century.
construction began with high hopes, but by 2012, trouble surfaced, literally. As the first pontoons were pulled from their dry docks, engineers spotted fractures running through the concrete. Some cracks stretched across entire sections, cutting through blockouts and corners like scars. At first, officials reassured the public that cracking was normal in concrete, but independent audits revealed these were not harmless hairline flaws. They were through cracks at critical stress points, the very spots designed to keep water out. The findings were sobering. The cracks were traced back to design oversights and construction shortcuts. Reinforcement around openings had been simplified, and the detailing underestimated how forces would spread under real conditions. These weren't cosmetic blemishes. They were early warnings of leaks that could jeopardize the watertight stability of entire pontoons. And once cracks appear in floating structures, repairing them is a nightmare. You can patch concrete on land, but patching a hollow concrete vessel meant to carry traffic over open water is an entirely different challenge. The fixes were costly. Crews injected epoxy into the cracks, added more steel post tensioning, and altered designs for future pontoons. But those solutions came at a heavy price, more than 200 million in rework and delay. The bridge's opening slipped by nearly a year, embarrassing state officials and fueling criticism from taxpayers already uneasy about the project's swollen budget. Accountability became a public issue. Engineers were disciplined, audits were published, and the state admitted responsibility for design errors. But once again, the story wasn't just about cracks in concrete, it was about cracks in public confidence. How could a project costing billions stumble on something as basic as detailing corners and blockouts? For the average commuter, the message was clear. Mega projects are only as strong as the drawings behind them. The SR520 bridge eventually opened in 2016. It stands today as both an achievement and a warning. Engineers will tell you that all concrete cracks, but when you're building pontoons that must float for decades, the geometry and placement of those cracks decides whether a structure thrives or fails. A few missing steel bars on paper translated into years of delay and hundreds of millions in extra cost. This case shows how fragile the line is between success and failure at the billion dollar scale. Every simplification in design to save time or money risks multiplying into massive repairs later. Floating bridges don't forgive shortcuts. If corners aren't over-detailed, they will break open. And when they break, the fix will cost far more than the time saved at the drafting table. The SR520 story also highlights the hidden cost of modern infrastructure. People see the final ribbon cutting, but behind the scenes, engineers spend years battling both materials and mistakes. And while epoxy injections and redesigns patched the physical cracks, the larger lesson remained. When you build something unprecedented, you must expect the unexpected, and you must design with redundancy. Without that, even the grandest floating highway becomes just another case study in how billion-dollar dreams spring leaks. Data by the Kirkland Reporter shows that WSDOT paid $71 million for pontoon fixes, including $22.4 million to add transverse post-tensioning to four pontoons. If you're finding this breakdown eye-opening, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. It helps the channel grow, and it ensures you don't miss the next Collapse Deep Dive. These stories are just getting started, and trust me, you'll want to see what comes next. Governor Mario M. Cuomo Bridge, New Tappan Zee, USA When New York retired the old Tappan Zee Bridge, the replacement was framed as a landmark of progress. The Governor Mario M. Cuomo Bridge, costing between $3.9 and $5 billion, promised efficiency, durability, and a modern look across the Hudson River. Built as twin cable stayed spans, it was one of the largest design-build bridge projects in U.S. history. But even as ribbon-cutting ceremonies celebrated its completion, troubling reports emerged. Whistleblowers and investigative journalists revealed that dozens of high-strength bolts had fractured during construction. These bolts were not minor details. They were critical fasteners holding together the joints that carry immense loads. 
Officials initially dismissed the issue as isolated, yet lawsuits and public records requests painted a different picture. Disputes surfaced over the stay cable anchorage pipes, components that transfer the weight of the bridge's soaring cables into its towers. Questions about their durability raised alarms about long-term risks. What followed was years of litigation and finger-pointing. The New York Thruway Authority and the Design Build Consortium accused each other of responsibility for retrofits and inspection costs running into hundreds of millions. While the state assured the public the bridge was safe, millions were quietly redirected into repairs and oversight programs. For commuters, the lesson was uncomfortable. A brand new billion dollar bridge was already under dispute. It illustrated the unforgiving nature of cable stayed design. Because these bridges concentrated enormous forces into a few nodes, even small defects can have outsized consequences. The Cuomo Bridge became a warning that rushing construction and downplaying failures leads not just to lawsuits, but to an inheritance of costly monitoring for decades. The worries in New York set the stage for Texas, where oversight would take on an even sharper role. Instead of covering cracks with explanations, officials made the rare decision to stop work entirely. According to the Texas Department of Transportation, in August 2022, it suspended the developer's construction on the main cable state portion of Corpus Christi's Harbor Bridge to prevent a safety concern. Corpus Christi Harbor Bridge USA Texas set out to replace its Harbor Bridge with an ambitious cable state design that would soar above the Corpus Christi skyline and clear massive cargo ships. With a budget near a billion dollars, it was marketed as both a symbol of regional growth and a critical piece of infrastructure. Yet in 2022, the Texas Department of Transportation shocked the public by halting work. Independent engineers had flagged five serious design flaws, warning that the structure, as drawn, could suffer long-term instability. The language in the official letter was blunt. The final design was highly problematic, and continuing construction without correction would raise grave safety concerns. For a state used to pushing projects forward despite setbacks, the decision to stop was unprecedented. The pause forced contractors back to the drawing board, leading to redesigns, contract disputes, and ballooning costs. Months slipped by while engineers reworked foundations, load paths, and redundancy measures. Politicians fielded tough questions from taxpayers, who are furious about the delays. Yet, in hindsight, the stoppage was an act of responsibility. By catching flaws on paper, before tons of steel and concrete locked them into place, engineers likely prevented a potential tragedy. The Harbor Bridge episode has since been studied as a rare instance where oversight wasn't a formality, but a decisive intervention. Though the delays were embarrassing and expensive, they underscored the value of empowered third-party review. A delay may dent public confidence for a season, but it is far better than unveiling a landmark project only to see its weaknesses exposed in real time. A KIII-TV report noted that TXDOT agreed to pay an additional $400 million, bringing the new Harbor Bridge project's cost to about $1.2 billion. The lesson from Corpus Christi naturally leads to another story across the globe, where the problem wasn't hidden in drawings, but appeared in plain sight only months after opening. Mumbai Trans Harbor Link, India In January 2024, India celebrated the opening of the Mumbai Trans Harbor Link with fireworks and fanfare. At 22 kilometers, it became the country's longest sea bridge and a symbol of its infrastructure ambitions. Costing nearly 17,800 crore, the project promised to cut travel time between Mumbai and Navi Mumbai dramatically and provide a vital link to the new airport corridor. But within months, videos circulated online showing cracks and potholes on approach roads near the Olway side. Political opponents accused builders of shoddy work, and what should have been a triumph quickly turned into a controversy. Although engineers clarified that the offshore spans remained completely sound, the public perception was harder to control. To commuters, a crack on an access road felt no different than a crack on the bridge itself. 
officials scrambled to respond. The Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority announced that the problem was confined to service roads, not the main structure, and deployed crews for immediate repairs. Penalties were levied against contractors, and within days the damaged surfaces were patched. Yet reputational damage lingered. Many asked how a project costing billions could show visible defects so soon. The incident revealed a truth often overlooked. The weakest parts of mega projects are rarely the signature towers or sweeping spans, but the less glamorous approaches and joints. These are the places where traffic, heat, and weather do their worst. The Mumbai case highlighted that no matter how flawless the central engineering may be, public trust depends on the details that people actually touch every day. In the end, the cracks were repaired, but the lesson remained clear. Every link in the chain must be built with the same care as the centerpiece. Free Press Journal revealed that MMRDA imposed a one crore fine on the contractor after cracks appeared on the MTHL approach road. With three continents showing how quickly billion dollar bridges can stumble, the pattern becomes clearer. Whether in New York, Texas, or Mumbai, the failures remind us that public trust is as fragile as steel under stress. The cracks on Mumbai's approach roads showed that trust can vanish faster than concrete hardens, and they also tie directly to a larger truth, seen across all five bridges. Whether in San Francisco, Seattle, New York, Corpus Christi, or Mumbai, the problems didn't come from spectacular collapses, but from overlooked details and rushed decisions. The Bay Bridge's rods snapped because moisture and chemistry weren't fully controlled. Seattle's pontoons cracked because corners and penetrations weren't detailed with enough steel. The Cuomo Bridge is still caught in disputes over bolts and anchorages. In Texas, independent checks were finally empowered to stop a design flaw before it became steel. And in Mumbai, an overlooked ramp made a billion-dollar icon look fragile overnight. The shared pattern is simple. The weakest point defines the story, and ignoring it can turn pride into scandal. I booked my last trip to Cancun for half the usual price, and no, I'm not gatekeeping. I used Expedia, and I've got an affiliate link below that gets you the same deals. No extra cost to you, just real savings. The full travel toolkit is free on my site if you want to plan smarter and stretch your budget further. I'm also really grateful for your time and attention. I spend hours digging into these projects, collecting the details, and shaping them into something worth watching. If you value that work, it would mean a lot if you could buy me a coffee. It helps me stay fueled and keep creating deep dives like this one. So what's next? If billion dollar bridges can stumble, what happens when an entire trillion dollar city is built on uncertain ground? In the next episode, we'll step inside the world's most ambitious megacity project and explore why it may never be finished. Don't miss it. Hit subscribe and join me for another Collapse Deep Dive.